Hey everyone, so in today's video we are going to be talking about ionization energy aka ionization potential. So let's begin. The energy change which is largely energy absorbed in this case. So the energy change when one mole of gaseous particles, we are not talking about solids, we are not talking about liquids, we are talking about gaseous particles lose their outermost electron. So when one mole of gaseous particles lose their outermost electrons, the energy absorbed in the process is known as ionization energy. Imagine I have one mole of solid sodium sample. It is solid in nature, that is why I'm writing the state symbol as S. These are one mole, so for sodium it is 23 grams of sodium. If I give it heat, the particles are going to absorb the heat, they're going to overcome the electrostatic attraction of the metallic lattice and they're going to become liquids, that is melting of sodium. And one a mole of sodium is now molten in nature, so I'm writing the state symbol to be L, which means liquid in nature. If I continue to give heat to this sample of sodium, it is going to expand and it's going to become one mole of gaseous sodium sample. So now I have the gaseous atoms lying around in the container. That is why the state symbol is written G, which means gaseous atoms. If I continue to give heat to this one mole of gaseous sample, now the heat absorbed is going to help in the releasing of the electron from the outer shell of the sodium. And each sodium is going to lose its electron and become a positive ion, thereby becoming a cation. So each sodium becomes a positive ion and the electrons are going to be released by these sodiums which I am drawing with a blue dot. It is one mole in amount, it is gaseous in nature and these are no more atoms, now it is ion. That is why I am writing a positive charge on these sodium gaseous cations while the electrons obviously are released along with the cations. The electron is lost from each atom and that is the phenomena of ionization. The electron is released from the outer shell or whichever shell the atom has available. If you want to study it further, let's study how the gaseous ions are produced from the gaseous atoms using an equation. We had one mole of sod sodium gaseous atoms and now they are going to become one mole of sodium gaseous ions and now they are going to release their electrons. To have more practice of this kind of phenomena, let's write some ionization equations. For example, I am taking the first ionization energy of potassium atom which means the last electron of potassium to be released, which means one mole gaseous potassium atoms lose their outermost electrons and become one mole gaseous potassium ions. If I want to continue this phenomena, I will talk about second ionization energy of potassium which means potassium is going to lose its second electron. It already has a plus charge, now it's going to get a plus two charge by releasing one more electron. In third ionization energy, we are referring to potassium ion which has already lost two electrons and now it's going to lose its third electron. That is why it's becoming a plus three ion and releasing the third electron. We don't have to write three, three minus electrons. It has already lost two and now it's losing one more. Now let's talk about first ionization energy of oxygen atom. Oxygen was gaseous in nature. We had one mole in amount for oxygen and now it had no charge. After losing an electron, it becomes a plus one ion in the gaseous state and loses an electron. Hypothetically, if you are talking about the fourth ionization energy of oxygen, we are referring to an oxygen particle which already has lost three electrons. So it should have a plus three charge already over here. It is plus three. It is going to lose fourth electron becoming a four plus and now it's going to lose one more electron over here. This is the idea of writing ionization equations. 
Remember that all the ionization energy values are always positive because they are always the energy absorbed. All the ionization reactions are endothermic because heat is absorbed in order to release the electron. If we draw an energy profile diagram, we are actually going to draw arrow upwards. Let's quickly talk about the factors that affect the values of the ionization energies for various atoms. So we are going to be talking about the ionization energy values of different elements. There are two key features that affect the ionization energy value. First is the number of protons, which means how many protons or the positive particles are present inside the nucleus. The atomic number, you can say, affects the ionization energy. The second is the number of shells which are present in the atom. If there are more shells, it means the outermost electron is really far from the nucleus. Less shell means the outermost electron is really close. To have a visual idea, let's imagine two different atoms. They both are from the second period, they both have two shells. One has five protons, the other has eight protons and they all have their electrons in the shells. One is boron with atomic number 5, the other is oxygen with atomic number 8. I'm going to highlight their outermost electron and let's see the distance of these electrons with the nucleus. It is almost the same because they both are in the second shell. So they have the same distance from the nucleus. And that is why the distance is not the main feature over here. But boron has 5 protons attracting the electrons, oxygen has 8 protons attracting the electrons. More protons will cause more nuclear pull and more protons will be able to pull the outermost electron really firmly. So it will be harder to remove the electron from oxygen but it would be easier to remove the electron from boron because there are less protons. That is why the ionization energy of oxygen is going to be higher than the ionization energy of boron atom. It is because of the difference in the number of protons and the nuclear pull. More protons cause the ionization energy to be higher. In another example, let's study two different atoms from the same group. We have lithium with atomic number 3 and we have potassium with atomic number 19. Lithium has two shells while potassium has four shells. The outermost electron of lithium is really close to the nucleus because it has only one shell below it. But outer shell electron of potassium is really further from the potassium nucleus because there are three more shells below the outer shell electrons. That is why the lithium electron will feel more nuclear pull because it's closer to the nucleus but the outer shell electron of potassium would feel less nuclear pull since it's really further from the nucleus. And that is why we need to keep in mind that if the nucleus is really further from the outer shell electron, it would cause low ionization energy because it can't pull the electron. So that is why the ionization energy of lithium is higher while the ionization energy of potassium is lower. That is only because the electrons of lithium are closer to the nucleus. Let's study a graphical analysis of this idea. On the x-axis, I'm putting the atomic numbers of the period 3 elements. And on the y-axis, I'm putting the ionization energy values, which means IE values. I'm starting from atomic number 11, 12, 13, till atomic number 20. Sodium, magnesium, then aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon are period 3, then potassium and calcium are period 4, 2 elements. On the y-axis, I'm writing the unit of ionization energy, which is joules per mole because we talk about one mole of gaseous particles. As we move from sodium towards argon, we see that the ionization energy values are increasing because all these elements have three shells, but they have more protons as we go further. 
Sodium has three shells but less protons. Argon has three shells but more protons. So this is the expected trend. When the protons increase in number, like as we go from right, the protons increase inside the nuclei. But the shells remain the same. All these elements till argon have the same number of three shells. So more protons cause more nuclear pull or you can say more nuclear attraction to the last electron. And that is why electron needs more energy to release them because more nuclear pull holds the electron more strongly. That is why argon has the highest ionization energy. When we talk about potassium and calcium, they have very low ionization energy because apparently they have more shell and due to the more shell, their electrons are very further from the nucleus. That is why they are going to have very less ionization energy. Because when we talk about potassium and all in the next period, period 4 with 4 shells of electrons, they have electron in the 4th shell. And that is why their electrons are further from the nucleus. They experience less nuclear pull, so that is why it becomes easier to release their electron. In the next video, we're going to be talking more about the past papers of this chapter and we're going to see how the expected trend is a little different. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.